Hello. <laughs> We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the Rocky World. <laughs> Woo! Yum. Welcome everybody, this is Matt Monarch and... And part one just got cut off, so we're gonna do a part two for you on the spiritual aspects. I know oh, what I know what. Someone had just asked, how long did it take after we got into raw food for it to feel like we were on a more spiritual path? Oh yeah, and I was talking about you gotta be clean and stuff. That's like key. There's actually a lot of yogis out there who like they don't accept disciples unless they do a raw food diet with colon hydrotherapy because that like they just won't accept disciples unless they do that because that combination right there is huge in bringing in that universal cosmic energy. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, when I get a clonic, I get so spiritually high, it's crazy. Get a series of clonics, your colon won't puncture. And in my case, um, I feel like when I was a young child, I felt very connected. I got a lot of messages from spirit. I knew things and I didn't know why I knew them. And I would, you know, I would know if my sister or my mum had had an accident you know all kinds of things like that like most children my my impression is that everybody can easily be that connected and most of us get kind of numbed out to all of that stuff as we're growing up which is definitely what it felt like happened with me I felt like um there wasn't mirroring around me for all of that kind of stuff so I just kind of like shut it all down and it wasn't until indeed I stepped into a raw food path that it felt like I was willing and able to open that space up in me again. Um, probably a year or so into a raw food lifestyle, you know, I really reached a point where I was willing to hold that energy. You know, that's really all it is, is are you willing to allow a big flow of love to come through you all the time? Most of us, you know, we're pretty shut down emotionally in our kind of societies these days. We're not genuinely connecting with other people through our emotions. You ask people how they are, they say, fine, great, good, whatever. And underneath that, there could be all kinds of turmoil and stress going on. And, you know, people don't acknowledge that stuff. They don't necessarily discuss it with anybody. There's a lot of suppression. So, you know, we can be really kind of bundled up and toxic inside. And a different path is to be willing to just totally accept the flow of love and gratitude and all of those positive, amazing things through your life and to focus on the positive. You know, if you've grown up in a family or a reality where the focus has been on the negative, primarily... The, Everybody? The, <laughs> you don't have to continue that pattern just because that's what you grew up with. You know, if you grew up somewhere where everything was a problem, this person's ill, there's an issue with this, that heavy, heavy energy, that's a choice whether to stay in that or not. You know, misery is a choice. Do you want to choose that or do you want to focus on the positive? Do you want to be happy? And the more that I was stepping on along the raw food path, the more I was willing to choose the, the good stuff, the juicy stuff. And I think... This is an important thing to remember. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yep. You are love. You are love. And you are love. And you are lovable. And you are loving. You can be all of those things and more. And I'm vibrating right now. <laughs> vibrating. Like, poof, poof. But don't get me wrong. I grew up in a family like that. And sometimes I go into that. I mean, I can still vibrate and... Nurture negative misery. <laughs> right, babe? Sure. I've come, pre I've, pre I've come a pretty long way for over the last four years, right? Yeah. Numbers. But I'm vibrating like crazy 